Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mark, author, speaker, inventor, endoscopic spinal surgeon. Today, I'd like to talk a little more about spinal pain mapping, what it is and what it can do for you. I'll talk about a 32-year-old woman who came in maybe a year and a half post motor vehicle accident with pain in the back of the left shoulder. This pain was fairly low, uh, down, and it really appeared to be a C7 nerve root issue. However, I was not exactly sure uh, because the MRI scan showed the C5-6 level to be significantly worse, but clinically it looked to me like a C7 nerve root. I decided to take her uh, to the uh, operating room and to actually to help determine uh, the level of the problem. I gave her a spinal pain mapping, which consisted of a selective nerve root block of number one, the C7 nerve root. And let me just explain how this was done. Under some very short, ultra short acting sedation propofol, uh, she is actually asleep while placement of the needle. The needle are special needles with two type of connections. One is an electric wire that goes to the tip of the needle and this goes to a little electric generator generating one millivolt. The uh, second component of the needle is a plastic tube uh, which can actually inject some contrast. So the sequence goes like this. The needle is placed in the vicinity of the nerve, the suspected nerve uh, causing the problem. At this point, if you're close enough, the little uh, electric generator with one millivolt will actually stimulate the nerve and you'll find some twitching uh, of the suspected muscles. When you're in the area of the twitching, the next thing is to inject the contrast and see if a uh, dye will confirm the location of the nerve. And once confirmed, uh, then you can inject the local anesthetic, which will anesthetize temporarily that particular nerve. So in this case, uh, with this patient, the first nerve to be injected was the C7 nerve root as can be seen here. And you can see that the dye was in it. This is after the electrical stimulation was positive. Then the next thing, the dye is injected to confirm the location of the nerve. And you can see that the actual outline of the C7 nerve root really looks uh, very clear. And uh, then at this point, you, the needle is removed and the patient is woken up and we can test then to see if her pain is gone. In this case, surprising to me, she had no significant benefit from this injection. So uh, she was resedated. Then I did the selective nerve root block with the identical sequence before at the C5-6 level, looking at the C6 nerve root. Uh, and then I did the dye injection as seen here, uh, put the Novocaine in, lidocaine, and then woke her back up. And at this point, she had dramatic improvement, 80 to 85%. Uh, this actually correlates better with the MRI scan as seen here, but uh, it did not correlate clinically as I would have expected to. So a, a case here where spinal pain mapping really helps to identify the location to decompress. And in this case, I'll be decompressing the foraminal canal at C5-6. When we're not using fusion techniques where everything just gets stuck and glued together, endoscopic decompression requires an accurate diagnosis, and I believe that spinal pain mapping is essential to give an accurate diagnosis so surgery can be performed at the level that the pain is being generated from and nothing else. Hey, thanks a lot for listening. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, please visit me at drtonymort.com or send any questions that you might have. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks a lot. Take care.